So as a subject today, seeking the great treasure. Seeking the great treasure. I want to get this in your spirit real good, so I'm going to take time with it. Seeking the great treasure. And under that, I want to say finding joy in the hidden things. I know there's somebody in the house, I remember, sister, years ago, losing their job. Oh, my God, some, that's the worst thing for some people. But sometimes God has something hidden in that particular situation. So that's what I want to talk about. Seeking that great treasure then. Finding joy in the hidden things. And you want to, we're going to learn about that a bit, and hopefully you will get encouraged today. So seeking the great treasure, finding joy in the hidden things. So I want to talk about treasure as I God gave it to me today to share with you. A treasure is hidden, and that's the thing. It's hidden, so you never see it. And that's why people struggle and not valuing things. This is nothing to me because you don't see the hidden value of it. So the thing we need to know about a treasure is treasures are most times hidden. Treasures have to be discovered. And that's why people don't find treasures in life because you don't discover them, right? He who finds a wife findeth the good, discovers this is a great thing. And when you don't approach marriage properly, you have no idea and value of what this partnership is going to be about under God. And that's how you discover it in, ma in marriage, right? If I had a bio daughter, she'd be waiting to be discovered. Spiritual daughters of mine, I always tell them to wait to be discovered. Some don't wait. They go out and show themselves, but it's nice to be discovered. Hello, somebody. Hear me today. Treasures are hidden and they need to be discovered. Work to get me is what my daughter would say. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Treasures are also buried. Hallelujah. And sometimes God has to bury us. And there are things that you may need from God that might be buried under a bunch of stuff that he needs to bring you through. You may have gotten buried in life because of your early childhood experiences. But how many know those early experiences do not define who I am today with Jesus? Hallelujah. Because I can go down a list of stuff about childhood stuff. But who has time when God has brought me up and brought me out? Yeah. Right? And so I was a treasure that was buried. How many think of yourself as a treasure? Well, you may not be there, but you'll be there by the end. I People say, you think you're cocky? No, no, I know that I'm a treasure because God has told me so. It wasn't man that told me because man told me opposite things. You're no good. You're gonna, not going to make it. You're this, you're that. How many have had some of that? Yeah, those are not somebody that treasures you. That's why you want friends and people around you that actually treasure you, that are willing to pour into you because they value you. That's why I don't worry about not having a lot of friends because you know what? They're hard to come by. People that really are into you. You ever had someone really into you? I don't know if you have, but it's good when somebody's really into you. It makes you talk different and cause your body, they're into me. I know that. And look, and I'm into her. So treasures are hidden. They have to be discovered. And most times they are buried. So things that are unrealized must become realized. That's what a treasure is. It's something I don't realize now that has to be realized. And that's why you go to God to uncover a treasure that I may need. It might be peace. And it's unrealized right now, God. But I need you to reveal something to me to bring me this peace. So are you with me so far? If so, if so, say amen. So treasures are things that are unrealized that must be realized. Let me say some more. So I've made it clear that a treasure, you have to dig for it. You have to discover it. Hallelujah. That's why I love finding my wife because there were not that I had many before me because it just wasn't all in me. But the few that came through, I knew how to discern which was which. And I knew when I found my wife. I want you to understand that because that's a very important kind of comparison to make. So you dig and you discover. You have to work for something. People want stuff easy, but you have to work for stuff. Right? So that's about a treasure. So this hidden thing, that means it cannot be seen. There are things, and we became friends and we caught each other before we saw each other in a different light. 
And we discovered that we're the right one for each other. Somebody say amen to that. So things are hidden before because God built a spiritual relationship between us. So hidden things cannot be seen. So when we talk about being discovered, that means they have to be uncovered. There are things that you have to uncover. There are some things you have to work for, dig for, to find in order to have them revealed. So when they're buried, they're underground, they're beneath, and we must dig. Somebody works, they work for the treasure. You have to seek that. And you want things from God. We have to work for those, Adi Cola. Everything does not just fall out the sky like some would have you believe being a Christian. We have to dig for some things. Hallelujah. You have to meditate on some things. You have to really get into the word of God and ask the word of God to get into you, to uncover some things that are not yet revealed unto you that you need for your daily life. Even. I look for treasures every day. Hallelujah. So treasures must be found. And I don't know about you, but there's got to be a hunger to want to find the treasures of God. You can't be satisfied with the things that others are satisfied. What is it in you? What's driving you? Where is your passion? You have the beginning of it, but is the passion still there? That you're still seeking for the treasures of God? Seek these great treasures of God. And I want to encourage you today, do not let that desire wait out. Treasures must be found. And in order to get to the treasure, and you all have seen stories, right? It takes a map. And X marks the spot. So we need a map to find it. Somebody said the word of God is a map. And we need a guide. How many know Jesus said the Holy Spirit will guide you? And so we get a guide and a map yeah. to find treasures. Somebody needs to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are not lost. You can find the treasure because you have the guide and you have the map. Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you. So your scripture today is coming out of Matthew 13. It says the kingdom of heaven is like a very precious treasure hidden in a field, the word says, which a man found and he hid it again. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field, securing the treasure for himself. And so he finds the treasure. Oh my, this is, this is so precious to me. Let me hide it back so no one else can get it. And let me go give up everything that I have so that I can have it. This is salvation. When Jesus comes to us, when you accept salvation, it's gotta be so precious to you that you do what? Give up everything else. So that's one example. In verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant in search. Somebody say, in search. in search. Looking for something. There are so many people looking for God today. They're looking for something. They don't know who to go to. And they're trying everything. Mysticism. They're folding their legs and head in all different directions, seeking Buddha, Huda, and Buddha. But how many is a true and a living God that they must come in contact with? <laughs> Hallelujah. And so this merchant was searching, looking for something. But it says, in search of fine pearls, and upon finding a single pearl of great value. Somebody said, that's Jesus. That's the true gospel. That's the pearl that I need. I've been looking. I'm not knocking for folks that try stuff. Because you know what? It is, it is important that you know you need something extra than yourself in this life. So people are going for crystals. They're, going, they're trying to manifest this and manifest that. It's good to know that you can't manifest a thing without him. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Manifest that. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the search of fine pearls and upon finding this single one of great value, he went and sold all he had and he bought it. So I want you to get this. When you find something, when you find the Lord, he has to be above all and so precious that we give up everything to have. Somebody say amen. So you got that. We're talking about the kingdom of heaven. We're talking about salvation. Amen. But the kingdom of heaven is within us. Why? Because salvation has come unto us. Hallelujah. This treasure is inside of us. Amen. So let's go on and talk about gifts and treasures. I don't know about you, but people like gifts. How many like gifts? Everyone likes gifts. We're in Christmas season, and people love gifts. But a gift, right, those things that we willingly give someone, no, no payment. Here's something for you. And you people say, thank you. Thank you so much. You thought of me. And sometimes you may not like the gift and you never open it. I'll be giving this away at the white elephant office swap. I'll be re-gifting this to somebody. Oh, you know how many has gifts that you haven't even opened or used? 
Right. Because it's not valuable to you if it's not something you wanted and all of that. But treasures are different, right? A treasure is different, y'all. It's something that's kept carefully. It's valued. Right? Someone can give you an old sweater. You may not even like it, but if it was given to you from someone that you love so much and you're connected with them, that sweater now has become what? A treasure. When you're a parent and your little guy or girl brings home that picture of you that looks like a rock and says, that's you, mommy, that's you, daddy. They're like, thank you. I see the resemblance. Just, and that's precious. That's that's a treasure to me. And you have it on the your desk while you're working and you spill some coffee. And you're like, oh, no, I didn't spill coffee on my picture. Because it is what? A treasure to you. I want you to understand gifts and treasures. Mm -hmm. Gifts are one thing, but I want a treasure. If you're still with me, say amen to that too. So gifts are given. We give givens, but treasures are discovered. Someone gave you a gift and you found out, oh my God, this has changed my life. I don't have to go through all that frying anymore with the, with the eggs and the flour and the seed. I can put this stuff in an air fryer <laughs> and they don't have to clean up all that stuff. This is a treasure. One fried chicken? Like, absolutely. Back in the day, it's like, I don't feel like doing fried chicken. It's a mess. But with an air fryer, you're just dumping in the air fryer. Dump everything. We're going to fry everything from now on. It's a treasure. So treasures are discovered. So sometimes you don't even know that things are there, you all, and you discover them. People go through with God, Lord, I need this, Lord, I need that. And God never brings the $300 that you need, but you're at home and all of a sudden God has brought you into a holy place where you're worshiping, praising God. And someone called you and said, you know what? You don't have to pay me the $300. So see, people want the $300, but God can work it out a different way. Something that was discovered. So a gift can become a treasure. And so Jesus was this gift. And you read your Bible. Don't you understand? For God so loved us, he gave this wonderful gift. Jesus came and gave himself and sacrificed. So Jesus was a gift, you all. But salvation is the treasure that he becomes. Because when you accept him, you accept salvation. Then your life begins to transform. That's when you realize this is a treasure to me. How many know what I'm talking about? When he becomes real in your life, there are many people confessing to be Christians. But true believers, oh, there's something active going on with your relationship with God. And you're realizing that he's sweeter and sweeter to me, just like the testimony we heard your whole life gets transformed and everything about you has changed now and people even see there's a change and you begin to depend on him more and more this is how salvation becomes a treasure because now that i have him i don't see my life without him and paul was wonderful right speaking to the church at Coloss, right he says now i rejoice in my sufferings for your behalf and my own body which is a supplement uh, whatever is lacking on my part in christ's affection on behalf of his body which is the church in this church i was made a minister according to the stewardship with god entrusted me for your sake the, this is the piece that i bolded for you so that i might make the word of god fully known that is a mystery which was hidden. So the word of God is this treasure that's like hidden and we kind of uncover it as you grow in God. I want you to understand this mystery unfolding to us, Paul is saying. It's revealed to us, God's people, those that have come into relationship with God, those that have accepted Jesus Christ. Now things can get revealed to us. Hallelujah. Things that were hidden are now revealed. And this mystery that Christ is among you, the hope of our glory, the hope of uh, uh, guarantee of glory. And he says further on, so that we may present every person complete, that you may be mature. Hallelujah. How many of God wants you mature? God wants us fully trained, hallelujah, and perfect in him. He wants his anointing on our lives. That is the blessing. That is the treasure, having God's anointing over our lives as a mother, as a father, as a worker, as an employee. Having God's anointing in your life as you go is what it's all about. Somebody say amen to God's anointing on your life. It's so important that we have his anointing if you want to be successful. And Paul knew that. And he said, like, but this I am laboring. I am going through. I am working this so that this can happen for you. I'm striving that you may have power. Hallelujah. Woo. And that's where I am today. I want people to experience 
God in a way that your life is transforming you and you realize this is a treasure to have God. Jesus Christ is alive and his spirit lives in us. Is this a spirit? Is his spirit alive in you? That's what you need to check every single day. That's why you wake up with joy. Hallelujah. The treasure brought joy. That's why the joy of the Lord is my strength. Regardless of all things that are happening, I have this treasure. You still with me? So this gospel is so important. This gospel is a treasure. Somebody said the gospel is my treasure, right? And so finding the gospel, finding God, it brings joy to the seeker. How many of you are seekers that have found joy when you found God? Matthew 5 and 6, bless joyfully nourished by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst. It's right there in God's word. God wants us to be seekers of this treasure. And those that seek, you find him, the Bible says. Amen. You hunger and thirst. Actively seeking the right standing with God. That's what we're talking about. Not people just say they're a Christian, but actually in your life, making sure that I'm communing with God, making sure that I'm walking in his ways, make sure I'm learning about him, make sure I'm teaching my children about him. So I say, amen. Then you'll be satisfied and you will, you will. So the thing to think about when you have this treasure is my life with Christ. Oh, I can tell you story after story what my life is like without with Christ, because I can't imagine what it have been for all these decades without him. So there's this life with Christ you get to talk about, and I know he's become a treasure to me because I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for Christ today. And it's this life because of Christ. Amen. If he didn't come into my life, I accept him when I did, then I, my life would be a mess. So there's things that have happened because of Christ in my life. Has it happened for you? So it's not just my life with him, but my life because of him. And then my life through Christ. I'm able to do things that I cannot do in my own strength. That's called his grace. So through Christ, I am able to do all things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh. What a confidence to have. Because I'm human, I can get down like anybody else, but through Christ, I can and I will do all things. Mm. Huh. People want gifts all the time, but I'm gonna encourage you to look for treasures. Gifts are good. Don't stop the gifts. I'll take them, I'll take them. <laughs> But look for treasures. People are always begging for gimme, 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 gimme. I had a cousin when we were children. I used to buy penny candy all the time. I used to hide, we used to have to hide it in the room because when she visited from down south, her mother, and she would find it in the room. Give me some, gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme give some. And then she would say so much, her mother would say, what y'all got? Give it to her. She would always say, gimme, gimme, gimme. Well, so that's not have that gimme, gimme spirit all the time begging for things. Whereas when I say looking for treasures, digging for the treasures, Lord, I want more of you. Yeah. Not getting stuck on stuff that's not happening, right? Putting that stuff on a shelf and then going back, well, God, what are you up to? What can I help you with? What can I be a part of? We should be searching for more. So that's the greater presence for this month, right? I want more of this treasure. That's what it's about. Are you with me? It made me think of one of our foster children, Jordan. I love Jordan so much. I love him. And I remember teaching him, he was at that age where he teach him how to tie the shoe. And I know parents, mothers especially, it's easier for you to tie the shoe than wait for them to tie because you just can't wait. But you can damage them if you do everything for them. And so my partner, <laughs> use the world language, my partner, you all know that's my wife, my partner would have rushed to tie his shoe all the time. Just tie his shoe, we have to go. But I would say, no, tie your shoe, Jordan. And I taught him, but I, then I had to let him do it. And he used to get so frustrated. Remember, he used to turn red. I can't, I mean, he, he just went through and it broke my heart to see him. Do it, do it, do it. I said, Jordan, tie your shoe. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And he just struggled all the time. Do you remember that? Oh. <laughs> he struggled so much, but I let him struggle with it, right? And then one day he got it. 
And his eyes lit up and he was like, I did it, I did it. He was just, it was just beautiful. So he didn't know, but when he, when it was known, it brought him joy. He was so joyful. He would untie the shoe just to do what? Tie it up again. Like a hundred times a day. Look, daddy, I tied my shoe. I was like, okay, I'm going to untie the shoe, take it off and hit you on the side of the head. Leave me alone. But he didn't know it. And it was frustrating. When you don't know things, it's frustrating. You get mad, you get angry, you cry. But when it becomes known to you, hallelujah. I tied the shoe myself. <laughs> joyful, joyful. Right? I want you to get this. Something wasn't known and then it becomes known and that's the joy comes. His ability was hidden. Sometimes your ability to do some things is hidden. And you're frustrated, you're mad, I won't make it. But you will make it. See, the capacity was there for Jordan, but it was hidden. And because he had to work for it, dig for it, he found joy. Somebody said, hallelujah. It had to be challenged in order to be revealed. Some of us are being pushed. You have to be challenged in order for it to be revealed. You want pure olive oil, but the olives must be crushed in order to bring forth the oil. People want God's anointing, but don't want to go through nothing. I love when people, they want such a great anointing of God. I'm going to do this for God. I'm going to do that for God. I used to laugh in my head. I said, yep, and he's going to do this to you, and he's going to do that to you. And you're going to yell out bloody murder. But I want you to desire the treasure. Amen. Because God will bring forth something if you go through that challenge. Somebody say amen. So the treasure was his confidence. See, that's the thing with young children. When you're teaching them those basics when they're kids, you have to let them do that. Because what happened in that his treasure was really confidence. Because it wasn't just about tying his shoe, you all. He now had confidence to do other things, Adekola. Because I can tell him, remember when you tied your shoe, you know how to do it. And I would tell him, it's in you to do this and do that. So the treasurer was confidence. Can't put a price on that, can you? No. And I bet you see him today as a young man. He has confidence that can be traced back to the beginning when it was fortified in him. And you and I, you have confidence in God and you can trace back when it was fortified. I remember what I didn't have. And I remember when I was begging God to help me make ends meet. And so now when I see ends meeting, I'm reminded of the time that it didn't happen for me. And I can say, thank you, God. I can say, joyful, God, because you have placed your confidence in me that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Hallelujah. I'm encouraged now because I've learned how to get up when I've been down because the spirit of God has lifted me up. My very soul, hallelujah, my mind, my will, and my emotions have been downcast before. But because of the confidence I've learned to have in him, that treasure that I have, I mean, I go into the treasure box and say, come on, soul, get it together. Mm. So treasure relationships. Think about that. My relationship with Jesus, I call it a treasure relationship. My relationship with God, a treasured relationship. I have a relationship with friends that are, I have treasured relationships. And what do I mean by that? Treasure relationships are those that become dear or precious to us. Hallelujah. Mother Selena Gordon is in Boston on the line today. She's one of our elders. Hallelujah. And I remember when I was in my backslidden stage, I had to come and visit the church all the time from school, from college. And she used to say, Brother Kenny, throw in the towel, she would say. Like, stop running from God, just throw in the towel. And like Anna, that prayed for Giselle, Mother Gordon was that voice that just reminded me, praying for you, praying for you. Every time I would come to church, throw in the towel. But there were days I did not want to hear that, I must be honest. <laughs> I was like, mother, <laughs> yeah, mother, I know, throw in the towel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God she prayed for me. So over time, even talking about today, all these decades later, I'm telling you that that's a treasured relationship. Nothing will ever change my relationship with Mother Gordon. It's a treasured relationship. You get the idea? It became more and more valuable to me because my life, look at it. If it wasn't for her and other people, Mother Berriman praying for me, oh, those are treasured relationships. I'll never forget them. 
My son was a gift to me when he was a child. Man, I went berserk when I had a baby. Woo. When he came out, I took him and almost didn't give him back to his mother. It was a gift, remember? <laughs> She's like, can I hold him? I was like, sure, you can't hold him. Yeah. But my son was a gift to me as a child, but he has become a treasure to me as a human being because of my relationship with him. It is now a treasure relationship. I'm like, wow, who knew? Who knew those with young children? You don't know what your children are going to turn out to be as human beings, but they can become treasures to you. Not just gifts, but treasures. And some of you young adults are treasures to your parents. I think about your parents and your parents and how they, I'm sure you must be so grateful to see you all. It's a treasure to see people fighting for something. Because nothing comes easy. So you see your young people fighting and learning and pushing themselves. That's a treasure. Holly, I'll do anything for my son because I see that he's worth the investment. Are you still with me? If that's what you want with the Lord, it's a treasure relationship. My marriage was a gift to me 34 years ago. But today, I treasure my wife, which happens to be my son's mother. Y'all knew that. Why do I treasure it? I cannot imagine my life without this woman. I think about her in ways that I never thought I would with 34 years ago. So when I say it was a gift when I got married, thank God somebody married me. But she is awesome as a human being. And so what a treasure she has become to me. Hallelujah. And that's why people struggling in marriage. Put it before God because I don't see why it grew. And it's a treasure relationship to me. That's precious to me. Are you with me? The value increased. It's incom incomparable to anything else. The, and I can say the same thing in my relationship with the Lord. The value of my relationship with God has increased. And its value is incomparable to anything else. There's nothing, no money, no God. Nothing compares to my relationship with God. And the value is just quadrupled and, and exponentially. It is so great, this relationship I have with the Lord. It is a treasure to me. Stick with God. And this relationship will become so great to you. And as David said, sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I got Jesus. If I got no cause, no, I got Jesus, I'm all right. So Jesus came as a gift, you all, but he became a treasure to us. Hallelujah. Salvation. Without him, I would not be who I am. In him, we live, we move, we have our being. Without him, you would not be who you are. I'm testifying. I would not be the person I am right now if it was not for Jesus. I received that gift, and he has become a treasure to me, and he's transformed me. He renews me every day. Thank you, he matures me. Yeah. He chastises me. Yeah. He loves me with an everlasting love. I can go on and on about him. People will receive the gift, but the question is, will he become a treasure to you? Will he become a treasure to you? Is he a treasure to you right now? I pray that he becomes a treasure to you. This is an hour we need generation of seekers. That's my prayer. People that really seek God to have him as a treasure in their lives. Psalm 24, 6 and 8. This is a generation. And the whole chapter is good to read. But diligently seeking God. And require him as their greatest need. When you say, I need you more than anything. That old song, I need thee. Oh, I need thee every hour. When you get to that place, he's a treasure to you. And parents. I'm going to give you a word today as well. I don't care if your, your child is an adult, but hear this. When we have children, there are things in them that are hidden, you all. They must be discovered and revealed. That's why the enemy works to destroy the lives of children. And one of the areas I work in is our child abuse, neglect, children's health. Because that first year of life, just to stay alive is, is a killer. Because we're losing babies. And then the first three years of life when the brain is developing, if you're in a house of trauma, a house where there's not food, not in a house at all, 
the first three to five years of life, those early developmental days, the enemy is wretched. Mm -hmm. Because there are things that God has placed in them that have to be cultivated mm -hmm. so they can be revealed later. Gifts and talents are in them. These gifts that God has given, but God has given them to be treasures. Mm -hmm. So don't be mad at me when I fight for children. I will always. Yeah. Always. We have too many children in child protective services in this country, and many of them are children of color. The things in them, though, that need to be discovered and revealed, but the enemy takes them out, we won't see those things. There are things in you and I that are hidden, that still need to be discovered and revealed. You all need to be encouraged today. I don't care what age you are. There are things in me yet hidden that you don't even know about yet. But if you seek God, he's going to reveal some other things. You're like, well, I didn't think I could do that. How many times you heard people say, I, I didn't think I could do that? Right, because they're hidden and God will reveal them for you. Businesses, I, I am not independently wealthy, but I am planning to transition and not work for anybody. And I know that all my needs will be met. I know that I'll be able to travel wherever and whenever I want to go. Somebody needs to say, well, sir, where's the money coming from? I have no idea. But I tell you what, you'll see me all over the globe. You'll be one, where is he now? God will finance this work in my life. I don't know about, this is, that's personal. <laughs> I'm not trying to get money for nobody else but me right now. <laughs> You'll be on the list, but right now, I'm focused. I'm look, I go, whatever's hidden, let it be revealed. <laughs> but there comes a point in your life, you need to know where is it coming from. Wow. Right? But I believe and tell as long as I'm alive on this planet, I'm gonna keep going for that treasure. Because there, there's all kind of things. There's nothing I don't think I can't do. Hallelujah. I remember as a kid, I couldn't draw, but somebody was throwing away paper in my mother's hair salon, and I started sketching, didn't I? Because I didn't want to see the paper go to waste. Who knew I had a little talent in me? Yeah, yeah I created logos for Yale University, logos for people in Boston. My logos are still standing. I laugh when I see them. I, say, I have a lot of nerve trying to be a logo designer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I can do anything I want to do. Whatever God, I can do anything. And you can too. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm laughing about it because I didn't know I could do those things. But I got paid to do those things. <laughs> Yale paid me $750 to design that wonderful logo. God bless them. So we have to stop seeing. People have stopped seeing God and his word as treasures. Truth desire it in this hour. Think about it. If King Uzziah had never died, Isaiah would not have seen the Lord high and lifted up. Sometimes God has to remove things from your life so you can see what's hidden. Mm -hmm. Things that you depend on, you want, you need. He was comfortable, but God had to remove the comfort. That may be going on for you. But he would have never seen the Lord lifted up. His treasure moment came because something has to die first. You all have heard it before. Something must die before life. Let some things go and go for the treasure. Treasures can be hidden even in the pain. That's what I don't mind going through because God is able to bring you through. Maybe hurt and all that, but treasures can come through the pain. When people lose loved ones, it is hard. Oh, it's hard because we're human. But one thing God has given us as human beings different from the animals, we have memory. So if I have my father, someone has a grandmother, different ones that have died, when they pass away, the natural tendency of our mind is to kind of encapsulate those good things, those good times. And when we think about them, they bring us what? Peace, joy, all of those. That's God. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that a hidden treasure? I didn't know that I could actually feel this, but it was a hidden treasure and it wouldn't have been discovered if, because God brought it when I needed it after I lost my loved one. Yeah. But it's given me memory that gives me peace all the time. Yeah. Treasures are hidden even in pain. Yield to God. I'm gonna close and go back to the pearl. It's like I love the butterfly, I love the oyster because it's the oyster that yields the pearl. And there's a 
pearl formation. And I don't know if you all know, but an oyster and a, a particle gets in it, like a piece of sand or something gets in the body, the meat of that, it irritates the muscle. And so they release something called a nacre, which is a solution. And they release that to cover that irritating piece of sand. And they keep it so it brings comfort to them. And while they're doing that covering, it shapes into a pearl. So it's pain came through pain, but it yields a pearl. So when you find that pearl, oh, it came at a great cost. The birth of a pearl takes time. God's work in us, sometimes it takes time. Let him do his perfect work in you. When the process is completed, that precious pearl is yielded. Let God have his way. And know that when you come out, like Job, you're going to come out how? As pure gold. So it's a response to an irritating thing. Some things may be going on that's irritating and causing you a challenge in your life. Don't fret. Say, Lord, let your anointing be released over this problem in my life, over this thing, and give me comfort while I have to go through. And in the process of time, you'll have your pearl. So the greater presence that we're talking about this morning is those hidden treasures that God wants to reveal in your life. How many want the hidden treasures? You need to know there's so many treasures, hallelujah, that God wants you to find. Hallelujah. A treasure is to be close to God. And that's what I encourage you. Be close to him. Hallelujah. The Lord chose the children of Israel. He says, I want to make you my special treasure. He says, I want to make you my own possession and treasure among peoples of the world, right? To be kingdom of priests and holy nation, which is what we're called, right? And, 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 and Peter, that's what he wanted. Priests, kings, just to be close to you. Just to be close to you, just to be close to you, just to be close to you is my desire. It's a song we used to sing, just to be close to you, just to be close to you, just to be close to you, it's my desire. That's precious, that's a treasure, just to be close to him, because if I'm next to him, I'm all set. Just to be close to him. That's got to be a motivator for you. Oh, God, you are my God. David said, with the deepest longing, I seek you. My soul, my life, my very self is thirsting for you. My flesh died for you. When I'm going through, I'm tired. I'm still longing for you. So I've gazed upon you in the sanctuary, he says, and I'm sitting in that place of praise and prayer to see your power and your glory. Hallelujah. I long to be next to you. Because yes. Yes. regardless of what's going on, hallelujah. Yes. He says, your loving kindness is better than life. And so my lips will praise you, God. Just to be close to you. That's my desire. God calls us a work of art. So give up everything for this art that he's created you, all the gifts inside of you, the talents, all the things that God wants to bring forth in you all. He calls you a work of art. He says, we have his workmanship. Master of his work, we are a work of art created in Christ. Reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for what good works which God has prepared for us so that we would walk in them, living the life that he had made for us. I call her. What is he going to reveal? What's the treasure you're on your way to? Tim, there's a treasure ahead. Keep seeking. And my little doctor in the house. Oh, there's a great treasure for you, Aaron. You know that. Great work. All of the Riverside women. 
Oh, something is that Riverside has been flowing all 2023. You all have been in the flow. Young women chasing after God, you've been in the flow. And I pray for greater blessings for you all. Because it's not easy. Hallelujah. Because the enemy doesn't want you all. He doesn't want them. You know it. But we belong to God. And his treasures in us. That's what you'll discover. So seek the great treasure you all. And you find joy in the hidden things. Don't be discouraged when you come to that place and say, you know what? I'm going to dig through this. And I'm going to find the treasure in this. There's a hidden treasure for me because my God is faithful to me. So don't get stuck in the sand. Like that pearl gets that sand. If people get stuck in the sand, you talk to them, they still stuck. I say to myself, when are they going to stop being stuck? That little piece of sand, it's a piece of sand that's got them all twisted up for their whole lifetime. A piece of sand. And they haven't released the anointing in it, so there's no knack or covering it to make a pearl. Don't get stuck in the sand or on the sand. Let the Holy Spirit cover that problem, that challenge you may be having, and let him transform it. If you got a piece of sand in your life, release the anointing on it and release pearls. See, this age and stage, if I wore pearls, I would have a string of them. Do you hear me? I have several loops of them because that's the kind of pearls God has released in my life. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. And just close your eyes and begin to worship the Lord and say, Lord, I want those hidden treasures in my life. Whatever treasures you have for me, God, I'm going to find them. I'm going to seek you, God. I'm going to find them. Those treasures. Hallelujah. I'm going to find those treasures. I say to all of you as you close your eyes. And I hope God is igniting some of you that have been dormant. And I'm saying to all of you there. God has hidden treasures for you. Don't stop Hallelujah. It's not over. Hallelujah. And I'm speaking expressly to our sisters and brothers in Born Again because you've lost your chief shepherd, but God is your shepherd. Hallelujah. And God has sent you a word. Hallelujah. And I'm saying for 2024, get ready. Hallelujah. But it has to begin with that desire. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst. And I will tell you who I'm looking for in 2024 are those, that generation of seekers. Hallelujah. Because I'm really feeling like, Joshua, I want to go in. I want to storm the gates. I want to take over the city. That's a spirit that I feel is going to be on me for 2024. I want to take over, but not the world. I want to take over the enemy's kingdom for God. And if you're out there, I'll see you in 2024. Bow your heads. Father, we thank you today. Thank you. We thank you for your word today. Hallelujah. We thank you for your care over us, that you will send your word to touch us. We pray, oh God, as we receive this word, that we continue to meditate on it, that we are inspired and motivated to go after treasures in our lives, that we are strengthened to dig even when it's hard. We know there's a reward on the other side. So bless your people as they go on their journey to hunt for those treasures that you have already for us. We thank you. Amen.